Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to continue where we left last time and what we're going to do next is to add the lines, the actual line segments not just the nodes to the to our rope and there's two ways we can do that we can add a line renderer to each one of the nodes or we can add one to the to the hook one big line renderer which will render the, the whole rope and that's what we're going to do so add a line renderer to the hook and for now we're just going to change the parameters width to 0.1 both of them and later we'll be changing the material but for now this is just it and as you can see a line render can have multiple uh, points and in our case it will have as much points as there are nodes so we're going to have to change this number as the nodes increases so for now it's it's at 2 which is which is the line that connects from the player to the hook but as there are more and more nodes there is one node we have we need a segment that connects from from the player to the node and from the node to the hook and this will be three three positions one two three and we're going to have that number change and also we're going to need to have a way to keep reference of the nodes so that we can keep on refreshing the position of the rope so to get the reference for all of the nodes we are going to make a list and to make a list we need to add in here on top using system.collections dot generic and then uh, here on the variables add a public list of game objects and this is just how you make a, a list variable the it's called nodes and now we have to initialize it new list game objects and this will create a new list of game objects and now every time we need to to add a node to our list we just do node.add and then in, in the parentheses the name of the of the element so for instance here we want the first element of that list to be the hook so here we do nodes.add transform.gameObject and this will be the first element of the list now whenever we add a, a, a new node we have to do that so on create node we do node dot add the last node which is the node that we just created just like so and now you'll see a list being populated here on the scene let me see if this is working fine so if I play you'll see that on the hook there's a list here with all the nodes that we just instantiated okay now we need to also like I said count the number of nodes or increase so that we can increase the number of positions so I'm going to create here a variable int vertex count and let's make it equal to 2 by default so which is the two positions of the hook and of the player and then every time we create a node want to make the vertex count increase by one okay and now we have to take care of all of the line stuff we have already set the variables we only need the variable for the line render and then we create so that we can change everything in the void render line function which will be executed every single frame on the update function so render line just like so and yeah we the only thing that we need to add here is also the line render public uh, line render lr and on the start let's set it to be the component so we're going to set the the line render to be this line render component by doing lr.get component line render and with the parentheses there and there you go and now on the render line we're going to have to iterate through the whole list and then change the properties of the line re render according to where each node is so first we have to set the vertex count on the line render so line render dot vertex count 
equals to the vertex count variable that we just created. So this is so that every time we we add a new node, this the line render value always has the, the number of vertices that are necessary. Now, now we do a for loop for, that goes on and on while the the i variable is smaller than the nodes dot count which is the number of nodes that is on the list nodes okay and in here all we have to do is to go on to the line render or, or lr dot set position so the first position is i and then we want to set the position in the, in the position in, is the position of the first element on the nodes list and to access the first element's position all we have to do is do nodes i just like we do in the array we use these uh, square brackets dot transform dot position like so and in the end we have to connect the player to the to the last node so we do line render dot set position and the position of the element after this one and we want the position on the list after this one we want the the number of i plus one but now we can't access high, the variable i in here because it's only in the loop so just copy this and paste it here before and delete hint from here and now this variable is can be accessible on this whole function so now i can do here i and put here the player dot transform dot position and hopefully this will give us a rope that keeps on refreshing and follows the positions of the nodes. So if I hit play, whoops, there's something wrong. Let's see what has not been assigned yet. It's the line render component, and that's because this should not be like this. This should be lr equals get component line render component my bad guys now it should work fine and as you can see we have a rope that goes pretty cool and of course you can change the color of the rope so let's do that real quickly and I'm going to also show you that the rope can but uh, can collide with objects so I'm going to create here a new sprite for that square and let's put here in the scene a square uh, it's, it, you can see it right now so I'll put it on black add components box collider so that the rope can collide with it and now to add a new material to the road you do create new material and let's make it a uh, sprites material default and let's change the color I'm going to change it to something like brown uh, that's kind of brown okay and then go on to the hook to the line render and put that color in the materials color and now you'll see that the uh, real actual rope is actually there and by the way as you can see the ropes are colliding with the cube let's make it I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that they can collide better like so now you'll see that the rope collides with it nicely there you go and of course if you want the rope, the rope to be smaller or bigger in the, the spacing between the, the nodes all you have to do is go onto the hook and put on the distance one or smaller even but then that will generate a new problem that I'll show you in a second as you can see this is bouncing fine and of course you can make the nodes sprite render be uh, inactive so that you you won't see the, the nodes so like this which gives a better effect and now let me just show you a problem if I make the hook travel really really fast so if I put him for instance traveling at uh, here to speed 2 and I click 
um, it's better if the nodes spark render is active and if I click you can see that this happens where the nodes stop being instantiated here and that's because there's not time there's not enough time for them to to be instantiated because as you may remember the ro the nodes are only instantiated while the hook is traveling but because the hook travels so fast they can't be all instantiated so to prevent this from happening we're going to make it so that here we do a while loop to instantiate the rest of the nodes that are missing so we do while and do and we do with this exact same condition while this happens we want to create nodes and this will prevent that issue from happening so hit play and now as you can see even at the last second all the nodes get created if they are not already and that's basically it for today guys uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial in the next one I'll be showing you how to delete and make reappear the rope itself showing many ropes as always thank you for watching if you enjoyed this drop a like below and see you in the next one